स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया last lecture of this module and it is a continuation with stone so let us look into what we are going to cover because we had left where we did not cover the prevention or the decay of stones and obviously that means the maintenance of the stones and the use of stone along with use of stone dust now as i told you in the query you get a lot of remains like once you dress the stone a lot of extra materials come out which can be used as aggregate once i have i already highlighted similarly the stones also leave some dust and whichever is not usable can be crushed and the dust can be obtained so that also has some use and last we will be covering the stone masonry similar to that of brick masonry so as you can understand that stone machinery is with some units which are not of similar kind that of brick so they must be obviously different but maybe principally they are similar so let us move to the prevention of the decay or the maintenance of stone coming to that first point is we need proper cleaning of stone so that can be by regularly by water or by water jet or by steam maybe some inaccessible portions you need water jet to be pushed on the stone surfaces and it is basically to take out the dust dirt organic matters likely to be getting accumulated with time plastering of stone is the only option sometimes but that too with lime mixed with linseed oil if required so plastering of stone is not much advisable however if it is done it should be done only with lime and no other cement not with cement because the chemical action starts with the minerals in the stone so that is why it is best to leave it like that or open to take off lot of dusts and organic products chemicals oils from the surface which are long deposited or deposited over a long period of time you can cover the entire stone surface with paper pulp now when the paper pulp is stuck on top of it it absorbs the oil it absorbs the chemicals it absorbs the dirt dirt after keeping it for a considerable period of time and then again with water jet you have to take it off that gives back the old color or the natural look of the stone which was getting ruined due to the deposition of different kinds of dust dirt or chemicals so once doing that the impurities come out from the surface and it leaves the stone clean with its original shine stones may have pores within it so lot of pores may be there which needs to be filled in because those are the accumulation points of water so to avoid that it is always better to fill in the pores with stone dust paste so you make paste of stone dust with linseed oil and you can fill in the voids to avoid water accumulation and finally coating of stone with epoxy or which is called impregnation is also done to avoid some chemical action directly happening or affecting the stone surface it is also to be remembered if you see the last few points which are highlighted in red you must put the loading on the stone in the perpendicular direction of its grain perpendicular direction of its natural bed so if you have a stone having its natural beds in this direction the force or the load compressive load should be acting on this 
direction. If you have done that in the wrong direction, it will lead to decay or split, it will lead to split of the stone layers. So, this is to be remembered that the stones are to be sitting on their bed on which the pressure is falling perpendicular to it. You see another major point which is mutual decay. When two different stones are used, minerals of one stone may react with the minerals of the other stone which is quite obvious. So, this is mostly watched in limestone and sandstone. So, if you remember limestone and sandstone usually we do not put these two stones together. So, mutually they will decay each other. So, that will have a corroding effect. So, these are the major points to be remembered when you are doing a stone masonry and how you need to keep it maintain it over time. Now, coming to the use of different stones in buildings, we have already gone through the geological classification where we saw granite or the igneous rock, granite and the igneous rocks are the hardest ones and they are used for heavy engineering works. And they are durable, they are strong, they are resisting against large forces, they can be there for long durations in water, they can be submerged condition. So, granite is the best, granite basalts they are the best. Building facing sea where what is happening on sea sites, the sand winds are hitting the building. The regular sea breezes are affecting the sculptures if there are any. Even if it is a bare surface, it is affecting the bare surface. So, the attrition is happening. So, there you need compact source, compact stone. Again granite and sandstone, sandstone is a metamorphosed rock, those are doing marvel. Building in industrial areas, those are again fine grained that is compact sandstone because in industrial areas they are going to face chemicals, chemical fumes, pollutions and they can be resisted by sandstone. So, they are strong and durable they are resistant to acid fumes and smoke. Similarly, you see arches, they are circular, they are made of small pieces joined together, arches, vaults, they are made with marble, close grain sandstone, which has strength as well as durability. Building face work, carved work, ornamental work and statues. Marble is there in the list, fine grain granite is the other one and they are light in weight, soft and easy to work and have pleasing appearance. They may be available in different colors. For fire resistant structures, it is compact sandstone. Then you come to the aggregate as you can see the road, metal and the aggregate for concrete, it is granite, basalt and the quartzite, they are fireproof also. So, when you are looking for strength, fireproofing, you go for the igneous kinds of rocks, not within our domain, railway, ba railway ballasts are also coarse grain sandstone and quartzite. they are hard, tough, highly abrasion resistant. Particularly for roof tiles, we always see in the mountain regions, the hilly regions, we see use of slate. Slate is electrically insulator. So, any thunderstorm, anything that will not electrocute the house. So, slate is a insulator and it is a foliated item, foliated rock. So, thin laminas are obtained. I will show you pictures. So, it is a poor conductor of electricity and it is recommended for any kind of layer which needs in which is insulating against electricity. So, slate is recommended for roofs, slate is recommended for any kind of electrical conduiting through that stone. Let us see the pictures. You see the railway bridge, the huge arches and the strong structure of 
basalt. You see the Colosseum made of limestone, travertine limestone particular type where all these arches are made and it is standing still today. You see the red sandstone of Agra fort also of Fatehpur Sikri and here you see the use of tiles of slate. They are thin lamina usually following the similar kind of principle of clay tiles. So, the lowest one is the bottom most and the starting point and on top of it they are sitting even there is an overlap at the ends edges. So, no water can seep in usually this arrangement is or done on top of a wooden support system. Again wood is also an insulator thermal insulator. So, electrical insulation thermal insulation and overall insulation of the hillside sloping house. Here are some more pictures of demonstrating sandstone as a building material, stone as a building material. Now coming to the stones, where are they used for floor finish? Other than the as the wall material, they are used for floor finish, they are usually limestone, kota stone in particular which is abundantly available in kota of Rajasthan, granite, marble. Marble is a soft stone as we have already discussed. So, that is preferred where the footfall is low. So, for institutional buildings where lot of students are coming going in, college people going in, moving out, marble is not recommended because it withers away. Rather granite would be a better choice. Whereas, limestone can stay for long, can be exposed to weather for long duration and you can use limestone particularly kota stone for any kind of floor finish indoor as well as outdoor for regular uses. Now, stone may be as a when it is used as a layer or a floor finish, it may be unfinished form, it may be finished form or polished form. Usually outdoor surface, outdoor uses remain rough and unfinished and it makes it anti-skid too. Whereas, polished is usually done for kitchens, corridors, lobbies, rooms, hotels etcetera. We see Jaffrey work usually made with marble. So, it can take intricate works, you can work with such tools on marble. Stone is also used as a walling material, not as a structural wall, but as a cladding. Cladding means it is covering the wall. It may be a brick wall clad with stone, red sandstone. So, you have clamps, you have clamps, supported from the, supported from structural wall. And thin pieces of stone, sandstone usually are clad, are supported, are hanging with interlocking between each other. So, these clamps actually help it to get away from the wall and hang to form a uniform facade. Now, coming to stone dust, what are the uses of it? You have seen the use of aggregate, the larger pieces obtained from the quarry are crushed down to some particular size and below that which forms the coarse aggregate or the large size particles. However, the dust forms the component for maybe making fly ash bricks. It can be used as a fine aggregate in concrete making and also even for paving blocks. So, ultimately stone dust is used as a replacement of sand. Sometimes artificial stone is also made by putting a good percentage of stone dust in the mixture and it gives a stone like finish. So, that is also artificial stone. So, these are the particular uses of stone 
other than using it as a structural wall. So, stone can be used as a finish particularly for the walls, particularly for the floors, particularly for the, as a cladding, particularly for partitions with jaffrey work, ornamental walls. It can be used as a roof tile and stone dust as well as stone aggregates do have its use in the building industry. Now, let us see how they look on floor. This is a marble flooring. What you see here? There are lots of lines apart from the line of the tile which are placed kind of square grid. These are the veins of marble and depending on these veins the price varies. This marble has a shine you can see it is a polished marble. So, these veins are depositions of minerals over time and it has happened in a very specific way which gives the tiles such kind of finish, such kind of look. You can see granite floor here, the texture is different. Same here, the granite floor here it is a continuous, here it is a square pattern. So, tiles are of smaller size whereas, tiles here are of bigger size in the lower picture. You can understand here there is a series of seat. So, that means it is not a residential building. It may be a hospital, it may be a office waiting. So, such kind of spaces have such continuous flooring. Yes, it is quite expensive. Whereas, smaller pieces are not so expensive because they can be mined easily. Large pieces querying out is a difficult task which is reflected at the cost. Now, here you see another marble where you can see a very particular kind of particular kind of pattern which has been continuing which is not much seen in the upper one. The color is also different. When you see all these polished floors on one side, polished floors on one hand, you see here stone paving, you see here kota stone flooring. See here stone paving blocks are being used, have been used for an outdoor area. Whereas, kota stone flooring is used here again in another outdoor setting which is unpolished. So, depending on where you are using it, it is very important what you are, what kind of stone you are recommending. You see particularly for the marble, you need to arrange the veins to get, su get such pattern. You see 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are matched in such a way it creates this pattern. So, they are arranged to get a seamless feeling that it is a continuous piece. So, these are only obtained yes from stone merchants you can get it but these are to be ordered specially. They have large size, they require larger transportation cost, they need to be carefully brought to, brought to site, hence it brings in a component of cost with it. You can always recommend kota stone in kitchen because kota stone does not take stain. You can refer kota stone for laboratories which is the other place where you always happen to spill some acid or alkali in a chemical laboratory. So, you have to remember that what is the purpose, where will it be used, what will be the footfall, whether it should be withstanding the weather condition continuously or it is an indoor area. Based on that you can recommend your selection, recommend your stone. Now, let us come to the last part which is the stone masonry. We have gone through the brick masonry and I have demonstrated how to do brick masonry, but it is very difficult to demonstrate stone masonry here. But what do you see in the picture? You see haphazardly arranged stone in this picture. Similarly, also you see haphazardly arranged stone in most of the pictures 
where you can actually try to find out some course, some regularity that these pieces are more or less rectangular, whereas these are all polygonal, these are tried to maintain some line which can be read like this line, some lines are there. However, if you see this picture and this picture, you can differentiate that yes, not by color, but by the style, you can see that a lot of small, small stones are arranged to fill in the gaps, whereas here they are more or less similar kind of size and selected. Here you see the small size stones are missing, it is all polygonals which have been arranged accordingly so that some of the faces match and they become regular polygons can be seen. Here you see in the flint masonry where, where it is mentioned, there is lot of, lot of plaster, lot of mortar or the binder and the number of stones are not so much. So, instead of putting small, small stones which is seen in random rubble, here it is filled in with more of mortar. Here you see they, are, they have tried to make or maintain some regular line, but yes with very different kinds of there may be two courses or two layers of stone there may be and one layer of stone, one layer may be in longer direction, one may be in the shorter direction. So, they have tried to achieve it as a square pattern and it is named as square masonry. Now, what you see here is the continuous wall from seen from the front. If we want to see what happens in the transverse direction, then we might see that in section that is if this is the transverse direction, we may find that whatever be the appearance from this side, it may be a combination of 3 to 4 stones also in the transverse direction. So, to achieve this thickness may be few stones have been set together, but it has to be remembered that after some layer there should be a continuous stone to support it, to not to allow it to break in this direction. So, if you had something like this only like small, small stones together forming the wall, a wall may rupture this way. So, this can move apart this way due to any kind of lateral force or any kind of lateral movement. But if you can connect it with a stone which is continuously passing through the entire thickness, then the whole thing gets bound. This stone is called the through stone. through stone. So, similar in principle like the brick, you do not need to have any continuous vertical wall. What you had seen in this, there is no continuous vertical, vertical line. You are also not to have any transfer, any vertical continuous line in the transverse direction. That is also followed in case of brick. It the same is followed in case of stone wall when you put a through stone at regular interval. So, the major types of stone masonry is the random masonry and the ashlar masonry. The random masonry you have seen random stone masonry may be random rubble, coarse rubble, flint rubble, dry rubble. Dry rubble means there is no mortar in it, it is only arranging the stone it may be used for say low height boundary wall, you can have a dry rubble. Usually this random stone masonry are seen for low height walls, maybe one story structures as retaining walls. However, if you are 
going for a building or a residence made of stone, you need to use dressed stone masonry or the ashlar masonry. We will see those, but before we should check that on site stones are to be sorted. As in case of bricks, we had to make brick bats, we had to make brick closures to end the thing, end the wall, to turn the wall. Here also you need to sort the stones before laying. So, similar kind of stones in thickness, similar kind of stone in form are to be identified. Through stones, when you know the thickness of the wall, you have to look for through stones which can run continuous on the transverse direction. You have to look for cap stones that is the ending stone or the starting stone which will be more or less regular in shape. So, you have to start with a cap stone and then go forward with continuously through stones at intervals to get a good machinery wall. You need appropriate tools which should be there which are which are not much required in case of a brick machinery. Brick you can pick up one brick with your hand. Stone you may depending on the size you may require more than one person in the entire operation. Brick units are large hence heavy though the specific density of brick and stone is almost the same. But the size looks into the weight part volume. So, if we look into some of the key points because of definite shape and size brick machinery is different from stone machinery, but the underlying principle remains the same. More mortar is required particularly for stone masonry which is rubble work. Ashlar masonry may require less amount of mortar because of this for the same area of wall because they are larger in size units may be larger in size than that of a brick. But usually rubble work ends up with around 25 percent mortar. So, we may conclude like Recommendation of a stone is to be judiciously done by looking into its purpose. Stone pieces and stone dust does not go waste, they are used up. Stone masonry which is discussed is different from brick masonry in some ways, but principally they are the same. Also we understood some of the preventive measures which are to be taken when we are going for a stone wall as a as a solution. I am leaving with you some assignments on the entire module and I hope you can do each of them because once you go through the lessons of the in the first four lectures the last four lectures hopefully you can do these assignments. I did not put any question purposefully for the introduction part that is for your that is for your reading so thank you